The following is a Wildcat Watch student production. from UPC Arts. Before we begin, we'd like to remind everyone to silence their phones and electronic devices. The moment you have all, you have all been waiting for has come. As we say in fashion, one day you're in, and the next day you're out. So now welcome to K-State Project Runway. The theme this year is upcycling. Each designer was tasked with creating a fashionable garment using a randomly selected article of clothing that was donated by the K-State Apparel and Textiles Department. This new outfit must be made with the majority of the old garment. They were also assigned an accent color to include with their design. In just a few short moments, you will get to see all of, their, our, all of our contestants' hard work. Our three judges will judge them in, on the following categories. Technical quality, design, creativity, originality, construction, functionality, and adherence to the challenge. Let's meet our judges. First, we have Wendy Barnes. <laughs> Wendy, can you please raise your hand? Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy has a PhD in apparel and textiles from the department here at Kansas State. She has taught sewing, textiles, and fashion history, and is currently an online programs and outreach coordinator for counseling services. Wendy is also involved with University Life Cafe, sponsoring the art contest with UPC each year. She has also previously judged on Project One Way for us. Can everybody give Wendy a round of applause? <laughs> For our next judge, we have Mondo Guerra. As previously mentioned, Mondo is best known as runner-up on season eight of Project Runway and winner of the first season of Project Runway All-Stars. He's also an avid advocate for HIV awareness. Can everyone give Mondo a round of applause? Well, tonight I'll be playing the role of Michael Kors, so get ready. <laughs> <laughs> our final judge is Tai Wu. Tai Wu, can you please raise your hand? <laughs> Kai Wu is a K-State Theater alum and member of the Manhattan drag group Hot, Sticky, and Sweet, bringing <laughs> live vocals to Aggieville and the surrounding LGBT community. You can find Tai Wu on Facebook or as her alter ego, Tyler Woods. She has also previously judged on Project Runway for us. A round of, another round of applause for Tai Wu. <laughs> Working hard on their pieces for two weeks, the designers teamed up with a model of their choice and students from Bellis Academy to show off their work for all of you this evening. Thanks to the Wildcat Watch staff, you'll also be getting a behind the scenes look at what inspired the designers to create their pieces. Let's get things started with Maggie Stewart. Everybody. My name is Maggie Stewart. I'm a junior here in the apparel and textiles program and my model is Lacey Smith who's also, a, uh, I think she's a senior in apparel and textiles <laughs> here. Um, my favorite memory at K-State is all the late nights we spend in the design lab right the day before a project's due. <laughs> um, and I really, this fabric really interested me because I'd never seen anything like it before. So after researching it, I found out that it was a favorite of the designer of Jackie Kennedy. So I decided to use Jackie Kennedy as my inspiration to design this look. Hi, my name is Bree, and we're here with our first contestant. Uh, this is Maggie, and um, would you please describe your major, Maggie? Yeah, I'm a junior in apparel and textile design and production. Okay, and so how would you describe your style? I really like looking at the interaction between architecture and nature, so not exactly looking just at like trees, but how vines grow on buildings and things like that. Okay, and what are you hoping for with your garment? I don't know. I'm pretty sure this came from a rack in the sewing room, and so <laughs> I, I have a general idea of what might be under there. Okay, so are, are you ready to reveal? Yeah. All right, so do you wanna help me? Okay. Okay. 
Ooh, fancy. <laughs> yeah, so this is an elegant beaded dress that we found. <laughs> um, so what is your first reaction with that? I have almost this exact same dress in my trunk of my car. Really? <laughs> okay, okay. So um, now we have an accent color that you have to add into. Um, are you ready for that? Yep. All right. Okay. Green. Green. That's my favorite color. Okay, cool. So how do you think you can mix green with this? I don't know, because green is pretty much the only color that's not in there, so. <laughs> I don't know yet. Okay. That'll be interesting. All Thanks. right. Good luck. <laughs> start to our show this year. We would like to take a moment to thank all of our sponsors who have helped us with this event. The LGBT Resource Center, Bellis Academy, Wildcat Watch, and K-State After Hours. Round of applause for our amazing sponsors. We will now like to get things going with our next contestant, Emily Sanders. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm a junior in the apparel and textile design program. And I was inspired for my dress by, well, the dress I got was green and it was covered in beaded peacock feathers. So um, I took peacocks as my inspiration and did some fabric manipulation for the front of my jumper. And the back of it, I fanned out the um, strings to make it like peacock feathers. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chelsea, and we're here with our next contestant, Emily. So what is your major and year? I'm a junior in apparel and textile design. All right, and what's your design aesthetic? I like simple silhouettes with complex seam lines. Lots of fun. <laughs> and how are you feeling about getting your garment? What, what kind of thing are you hoping for? Something with a lot of fabric. All so right. I have lots of options. <laughs> That's always a good thing to have. Well, are you ready to see your garment? Yep. OK. I wasn't expecting green, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, it does have a lot of fabric. It does. How are you feeling about this garment? I like it. See what I can do with it. Do you have any ideas yet? Anything brewing? No, not really. Well, now you get to see what your accent color will be. So please stick your hand in the, in the button bag. Yellow. Yellow. <laughs> All right. Do you have any ideas with the color design combination? It's nature-y, I guess. Yeah, there's a lot you can do with that. So you'll be using a $20 Joann's gift card uh, to get your accent fabric and any notions that you need. But most of it should come from this garment. Awesome. All right. So good luck. Thank you.
Awesome job, Emily. We would now like to take a moment to talk a little bit about one of our sponsors. The LGBT Resource Center acts as a central hub for resources for LGBT and allied students, students, faculty, staff, and administration. The center's goal is to promote equity, respect, and social justice through programs, outreach, and education. Along with information on non-discrimination policies and events, the center provides things from counseling services to safe to safe havens for people affected by homophobia, hateful acts, and sexual violence. The Resource Center also works closely with administration to ensure that K-State's campus is safe and inclusive in all of the events and facilities on campus. Let's have a nice round of applause for this re important resource. <laughs> Next up, we have Kat Zoshki. Hi everyone, my name is Kat Zosky and I am a senior in apparel and textile design. My model is my good friend, Victoria Umscheid. She is also a senior in apparel and textile design. Tonight, um, you'll see a look I created from a burqa. Um, when I was handed this burqa, uh, my mind raced, thinking, is this okay for me to cut up? Is this cultural appropriation? Upon my study of the burqa, I found that it is not a holy garment. Um, rather, it is a garment created from a value of modesty. And their tradition of beauty has since transformed from that value of modesty that they hold so dearly to them. So with this garment that I'm about to show you, I wanted to juxtapose Eastern values and standards of beauty with Western values and standards of beauty. I'm Charlie and I'm here with Kat, our next contestant for K-State Project Runway. Hey Kat, can you tell us your year and major? I'm a senior in apparel and textiles design. All right, that sounds fun. So, how would you describe your design aesthetic? Oh man, my design aesthetic has really evolved a lot over the years, um, but and I think I'm still figuring that out. Mm -hmm. But I think it's bold and clean while still being wild and unexpected. That sounds fantastic. So, how are you feeling about your garment? Is there anything that you're hoping for in particular? Nope. No. Nothing. I, uh, yeah, it's probably going to get cut up. There you go. Up. That's all we can ask for. Okay, well, we'll see. Here's your garment. Wow. This is a traditional burqa, a garment that many Muslim women use, and while it is important to the religion, it is not in itself holy, so it can be cut up and recycled. Okay. So how are you feeling about this garment? I, I think it makes me feel a little bit better knowing you, that you say mm -hmm. I can cut it up, but I think it will be a little bit um, of a mental barrier for me to cut up something that is a spiritual mm -hmm. garment. I would have never, ever thought to use a burqa, so I am excited for the challenge. Yeah. All right. Are you ready to see, find your accent color? Mm. All right. All right. Your accent color is purple. Okay. So how are you feeling about this color and color garment combination? I think it's a good color combination. I was at first worried it was pink because I <laughs> hate pink. Well. But fuchsia is good. Fuchsia, purple. Those are things that you can work with. Thank you, Kat. 
As we said at the beginning of the show, we are both arts co-chairs for K-State's Union Program Council, also known as UPC. UPC plans 150 to 180 events across K-State's campus per year. We do everything from weekly movies to open mic nights to large-scale events like Dustin Lynch and Kevin Hart. Some of the events coming up include a ping pong tournament at 6 to 10 p.m. on February 26, a showing of the Big Short at 7 and 9.45 on February 26 and 27, and Cirque Zuma Zuma African Acrobats at 6 p.m. in McCain Auditorium on February 28th. You can find out more about events by following us at K-State UPC or liking our page on Facebook. We, we still have a variety of events left in the semester, so we hope that you can come and attend them. Our final contestant for the evening is Amani Hassam. Hi, my name is Amani Hassam. I'm a sophomore in apparel and textile design. My model is Emma Costello. She's also a sophomore in public relations. And my garment was really inspired by the 1920s flapper girl, but I also put my own like edgy modern twist on it, so. My name is Amani Hassam, and my major is apparel and textiles design. I wasn't there because I had something that came up last minute, so they did my reveal with me by myself like a day late, like the day after. I was actually really surprised when I got my pranks. I thought it was gonna be worse than what it was. I got a this like giraffe type print. It would, came as a dress with like buttons down the middle, and then it also came with this blouse. When it comes to my style, I say it's more of like street wear, but also like feminine. Before I got my print, I was expecting it to be like really crazy. Like since it's upcycled, I just figured it was gonna be like the weirdest thing that I was gonna have to redo. <laughs> I was actually surprised after I got it because I actually don't mind it. And it's easy to work, like the colors are easy to work with, so. I got the red button and I decided to go with like a deep dark red. I'm making a skirt out of this material and then with the red fabric, I'm gonna use it as the top to go with the skirt I'm making out of this. And then with the blouse, I'm gonna use it as a design for the back of it. I'm excited but really nervous at the same time because I'm not really sure like what to expect when the actual day comes, so. This was a great way to end our show. At this time, we'd like to invite all of our contestants and models back to the stage so that we can hear the judges' comments. are we doing this? <laughs> we'll start with Wendy. Okay. okay. So I was curious as to why you chose to get rid of all of that awesome beading that was on it. Actually, when I took the beading off, I actually found there were a bunch of pearls in there. So I actually took the, the pearls and I lined them up around here and around the rim of my hat that I made. Okay. Because... Oh. After, I kind of was gonna go with and use the blues, but then when I had to change my fabrics, I realized the blue kind of clashed because it was like a really neutral blue and this was like obviously more of a teal blue, so I didn't really want to put it back in. And plus Jackie Kennedy was more of a pearl girl anyway. 
Very good. Okay, thank you. That was actually mine. I, I like her a lot. Can you turn around? And you made the hat? I did, yes. Cool. Very good. I like that you made an accessory out of the garment. Huh? What? You know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi. Um, I, 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 this is giving me a lot of, um, there's a movie out there back in the day called The House of Yes that starred Parker Posey, who was obsessed with Jackie O. And so I was thinking about that the whole time this, when this came down the runway. Um, so I, I had the same question as Wendy about where, where the embellishment went. Um, and it's cool that you did put the pearls in. Um, what brought you to your, your floral print? Um, I was originally going to do like a wool skirt, but then I found, I was looking at like her more casual wear and I found she really liked wearing prints. So I thought, well, maybe I'll go take a second look and see if I can't find a print that I feel would go well with the jacket that I already had planned. Cool. And you constructed everything in the, in the, <laughs> in this whole outfit, including the hat? Yes. That's great. Cool. Thank you. Hi, Maggie. Hi. So I wanted to ask you, what was the hardest part about coming up with your inspiration? And what was the hardest part through the execution? So for my inspiration, literally, though, I picked up that fabric and I was like, oh, it's just silk. What am I? I mean, it's a silk dupioni, whatever. And then I was like holding it and I was like, this is really heavy. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I've never seen this fabric before. And I spent like three days just looking up the fabric online until I finally found the fabric, like what it was and what it was used for. So I was like, okay, that kind of gives me an idea of where to go. And then construction wise, um, I had a really hard time getting the jacket in proportion and making it boxy without being unflattering. Mm -hmm. And I spent like four or five hours draping how it. Did you, how did you accomplish that? Do you uh, nip it through the waist or do you, there's a seam down the center back, right? Did you take it in through the center back? I had to do that because there wasn't enough, there wasn't ever a place okay. that I could get it. That would have been a good opportunity to nip it in a little bit through mm -hmm. the center of the back too. Um, you know what I would have loved to see? I don't love the floral. I would have stuck within the family of the Dupioni and maybe taken your accent color green and made like a shift underneath, a sleeveless shift underneath the coat. Again, I'm gonna say, I miss the beading. You know, even if we didn't see, if you didn't use the beading, that was really beautiful. Um, maybe you could have mimicked the neckline in the cut of the shift. That would have kind of represented that beading. Um, I really, really miss that, but I really do appreciate that you made your own hat. I think accessories and attention to details are very, very important. And I, you know, I do applaud you for using the pearls, and I know that you're talking about white, white and white, and she was a pearl girl, but when you're doing a runway presentation, it has to read to those, you know, people that are 20 feet back, and you know, it has to have that visual impact. So I think that if you push it a little bit more, it'll have a little bit more impact. But overall, really good job. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Sorry, I had to look at my notes. So you had kind of a challenging looking gown. That was a, an interesting uh, design. Although I will say I have the same question for you is why you got rid of the beading, the embellishment that was on the gown. I thought that was very intriguing. Well, I did start taking off all the beads and I was intending to use them, um, but I did change my design like four times. And just towards the end, I just kept pushing them away. Yeah, because I was thinking when she came down the runway, I was thinking, wow, she could have used those embellishments on that waistband. Yeah, that's a bell. And uh, I thought that would have looked just so. I really do like your design. I think it was a really interesting up, up cycle. I do have a couple of things. Um, I think it's risque, which nothing bad about that, except for the side boob. Yeah. That happened. <laughs> and, uh, and that, you know, I, I'm impressed with your pants. I can't make pants. I avoided pants completely in grad school. Uh, <laughs> so I'm impressed that you, you know, had a pair of pants come down the runway, and uh, I like it. I think they're a little bit tight in the back. You've got some pulling going on, but other than that, 
Good job. Hi. Um, could you, would you mind doing a little twirly for me? Wow. That's fun. Um, <laughs> let's be clear. I'm sitting here, like, you know, crunching numbers and things, thinking about my next outfit. And I see that, and I'm like, man, I'm going to have to shave everything. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna do it. Wearing a muumu. I'm wearing a muumu, like I'm wearing tonight. <laughs> but um, I, I really like the color combination. I think it's 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 bold, but it's it's weird. It's it's not bold because it's, it's it, the the colors are so muted. But it's it's a combination I didn't expect to come out honestly, and especially after seeing the dress. You know, your mind kind of goes to, well, they're going to try to make something close to the dress, you know, and, and keep that embellishment or whatever. Um, so I'm surprised when people don't use uh, the, the sparklies, honestly. <laughs> but, um, but I really like um, the, the whole garment, the whole line. I thought, it's, it's, is it separate pieces or is it a, um, oh, it is, okay, I wasn't sure if it was a full jumper or not. Is it easy to get in and out of? <laughs> Just say yes. Yes. I only asked because I was going to wear a jumper tonight, and I was like, mm, I'm going to need to pee at some point. <laughs> there are so many questions you have to ask yourself when getting ready. And yeah. Yeah, but I think this is really, really pretty. I think it's a nice, nice composition. Thank you. Hi, Emily. Um, out of all the contestants, I think that you had the best construction. So. Good job on that. Uh, you know, when they presented you with your garment and it was green and purple, and then you got your accent yellow, it had peacock feathers in it. My first thought was like, she's gonna go with this Mardi Gras moment. Like, I was like, that's just, just obvious, you know? And she came out with like this really beautiful uh, evening wear look. Like, I can see this as evening wear. Uh, it's really elegant. I think there are a couple fit issues, like Wendy said. Um, did you do the pleating on the top? Yes. You did. And is that chiffon? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I wish that I would have saw, you know, the green and the purple incorporated somewhere. I think that the silhouette and the lines in the back are beautiful. Um, I think, yes, again, on the side, you need to take care of that. You know, just a couple, couple darts or whatever you need to do. Um, and I also think at the hem, that could be probably raised just maybe an inch, you know, just to make it a little bit more cropped. But overall, I think the uh, proportions are really, really nice. Um, I think it's just a little bit of editing. Uh, and I think you're good to go. It's really beautiful. So my question for you is accent color? Yes, my accent color is in these purple beads. Okay. It's all hand beaded. There's um, each of these little tiny strands has six beads and there are about 40 beads on the front. Sorry, I, I look, I know, it's like I'm trying to see him. I'm old. <laughs> Fading eyesight, you know how it goes. Um, I'm really happy to see that you incorporated the most interesting part of the burqa, you know, that you used the, the face, and that, because that was so gorgeous, and I actually took note of it when they showed it, that I was said it was a great print and the mesh, and I was really hoping to see it come out, so thank you for bringing that out. Um, I think it's an interesting design. It's definitely a conversion. You know, it looks nothing like a burqa at all. Um, and I think it's interesting that it's modest and yet revealing at the same time. Can you turn around once more? Right, because you have, you know, just you have a modest amount of flesh exposed. And I congratulate you on that too, because a lot of times, you know, you get. You know, we all know the rules. You either show a lot of legs. You don't or... follow the rules. <laughs> Nobody follows the rules. <laughs> you never follow the rules. I know. You don't have to. <laughs> but, uh, but, well, good. I think I liked it. Okay. 
Sorry, I had to look down at my notes. Um, I really liked your, your initial um, explanation of, of what you were gonna be using and how you were going to work with it. And um, so I was really excited to see what you would make. And um, so it was uh, surprising to me that um, you did a jumper. I thought that's really interesting. I actually wrote down Princess Jasmine on vacay. <laughs> 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 and um, I was, I love that it didn't go, you, you did do a good mix of East meets, East meets West, because, mm -hmm. um, you know, that could have gone, you know, bare midriff, straight up, you know, I dream of genie pants, and it didn't go that literal at all, and I think that that's a good um, sign of your, your tastes and where, where you wanted to go with it. Um, and I like, I'm glad that you explained where the purple was too, because I saw it in the shoes, but I was like, mm, I don't know where it is on the, um, so on a scale, um, like Mondo was saying earlier, you know, in a, on a runway, we, I don't necessarily see the purple pop out with the, with those crystals, but I'm, it's cool that they're there. Now that I you explained it, I know they're there. Um, and I like them more on the strap than, I don't even see them like right here, but, but yeah, I think it's a really neat idea, definitely. Hi, Kat. Uh, you know what I was really impressed with is that, with your confidence, when you came out and you were at the podium and you were talking about your inspiration, I think that it's really important for us as creative people to be able to make your customer, your buyer, believe what you're selling. And then you, really, you really did sell me on your inspiration and your idea. Um, and I was really excited. When she came out, I loved it. Again, I was like, okay, where, where is the purple? Um, but I loved that, I feel like you, out of anybody, used your, you really manipulated the material in the most sophisticated way. You know, I like the idea of the jumper. Um, can you talk to me about the braiding? Did you do that braiding yourself? No, it's, all, it's been braided cord. Okay. All right. It, it was actually, okay, so I'll give you a little bit into my creative process. It was actually a brown cord, mm -hmm. and so um, I'm a natural dyer, mm -hmm. and so I was going to dye it with um, some bark from North Africa. It's called logwood purple. However, um, the dye didn't take, and so I scrapped that process, and I just bleached the whole thing to go for a clean white instead. Cool. And... Uh, you know, I appreciate that. You know, I always give more props to you being able to explore and really uh, experiment with, you know, with the process and applying that to you, to your work. So good job on that. I like it. I do feel like there are a couple issues with finishing. So, you know, like when we talk about details, you really, like it's such, a, it's a simple piece. You know, so we're going to see everything. So let's pay attention to finishing, 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 because these are the things that are distracting me from the idea and the quality, the overall quality of the garment. So focus on your finishing. I think you'll be really good. All right. Thank you. Hi, Imani. Um, I have to say, unlike Nina Garcia, I am a big fan of fringe, so I really like your detail on your skirt. And can you turn around for me? And I really like how you incorporated the fabric into the shirt in the back. I was really actually surprised, because I know you had talked about that on your video, that you were going to do something with it. And I was, I was envisioning maybe like the entire back panel was going to be that fabric. So I was actually really delighted when she turned around to walk away. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. So, uh, uh, and I love the fact that you made the choker out of it. I like it. I think it's a very nice, clean look. And I like that you don't have, like, I like the little crop top, you know, that you just have a slice of midriff showing. And yeah, that was, those were my thoughts. I was just writing down when she was walking down the runway. I was like, ooh, fringe. I love fringe. So. Um, when you first said flappers, I was like, ooh, girl, I'm a flapper tonight. Yes! Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm relevant. 
Um, <laughs> and then I, I loved when it came down the uh, when down the runway. I saw that little flash of fringe, and I like that. It's 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 not too much. It's not like ridiculous. I'm a flapper, you know. It, it wasn't all over the place with that. I did have a question. How much uh, of a garment did you have to start with? dress and it had a collar with buttons going down until like to the belly button okay and it had the slit on the side so I put the slit in the front so it was like a, it was a church lady classic then. <laughs> yeah and it also it also came with like a button-up chiffon overcoat blouse that oh, yeah also, yeah with the familiar. exact same print so mm -hmm. <laughs> Medea special <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um and uh, I, I would say, like for me, my own aesthetic, I love, I love prints, and I love. Um, so, uh, so I was a little surprised that you didn't use more of the print. And I like the, I like that red that you're, you've, you've picked, you've selected. I think that's a great color. Uh, and once again, um, I think it's cool that you didn't go completely literal with the whole flapper idea. You gave it accents, and, and gave it a few, and you gave it some modern flair, like it's more fitted than what what a flapper outfit does, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thank you. Hi, Imani. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna agree with the other judges. I like that you didn't go so literal. And the placement of the fringe is really unexpected. You know, I'm looking at the seams in the, uh, in the top, um, and I think that you could have explored a little bit more with maybe some color blocking. I would have thought this, piece might have been stronger as a complete dress and focusing incorporating the red as a color block kind of um, kind of look. Uh, and, I, and I'll say this to all the contestants, you know, I think that it would, what I would love to see everybody explore more is silhouette, you know, because these are silhouettes that we've seen. And I think that even if it's like an art, more of an articulated shoulder or you play with something um, in the drape or whatever it is, I think that will make all your work that much stronger. So really, you know, explore silhouette. Don't be afraid. Don't think that you're doing something wrong. Because when you think that you're doing something wrong, you're holding yourself back, you know? So it's really important to explore. And, you know, for me, some of my mistakes, you have to learn to accept your mistakes and they turn into really great ideas. So as long as you're able to kind of get out and explore and really, um, find new ways of creating silhouettes, I think that your work is going to get even stronger. Um, so, yeah, good job. Hello. Are we all right, thank you all for your feedback. All right, the models and deniers can come back All right, now it's time for us to tally the judges' scores and announce the winner of K-State Project Runway, Season 7. As we tally scores, please take the first 10 minutes of intermission to vote for your favorite garment in the buckets that will be at the front of the stage. All of you received a red ticket upon entry, so place that ticket in the bucket of the designer that you think is the best. All right, we will be back shortly with the results. Thank you. You know, uh, All right, everyone, please get to your seats. We've got all the scores tallied. Will all of our contestants and models please make their way to the stage? Mike, don't go to the Don't go to the Thank you all so much for voting for the People's Choice Award. This will be the first award we give tonight. Included in our award, we have a bag full of UPC goodies and a pair of Mondo brand socks. Ooh. Okay. The winner of People's Choice Award. They're not used either, are they? They're not my socks, right? They are. Oh, they, they are. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> the winner of People's Choice with the prize of a UPC gift bag is Kat Zoss. <laughs> In 
third place, we have Maggie Stewart. Okay, never mind. With a prize of $50. Um, in second place, we have Kat Zosky. Who will be taking home a prize of $100. And now, drum roll, please. The winner of K-State Project Runway Season 7 and the winner of $150 is... Emily Sanders. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations to all of our contestants and to our three winners. A special thanks goes out to the designers, models, and judges, as well as our sponsors for this event. LGBT Resource Center, Bellis Academy, Wildcat Watch, and last but not least, K-State After Hours. All right, another big thank you goes out to all of you attending in this event. Please give your thoughts on, on this event, filling out the event evaluation on each of your seats. Have a fantastic weekend, and thank you so much.